Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we are checking out Halo Vision by New Gen Audio. I have here a session in surround. It's 7.1.2. It gets down mixed back to stereo so I can upload it to YouTube. So obviously you're going to be getting it in stereo, but all the stuff in the middle will be surround so you can see Halo Vision doing its thing. If you're unfamiliar with Nugent Audio, they make a lot of plugins that deal specifically with surround sound and specialize in that realm. Uh, in this case, Halo Vision is a meter suite for surround sound mixing. So I've got here the panner, uh, the Pro Tool surround sound panner, and then there's also Paragon here. This is a multi-channel reverb that's just going to give us a little bit more to see in the meters, make it a little more interesting. So, and that's also, by the way, by Nugent Audio. It's a multi-channel reverb. Go check it out. We have videos on it on this very channel. So, the meters themselves. Let's just let's just go through them. So, we have a couple phase-related meters at the top that tell you how one channel's phase relationship sits with another. In the context of most mixing, it probably is just a good thing to see if a lot of things light up in a like red then you know oh, you're going to have a it's generally going to translate to super weird spatial movements because they'll all be out of phase um, but this would be more handy when you're doing things like checking dialogue against particular channels like left right channel versus the center channel uh, if those lines light up that could be an issue with dialogue you might want to address uh, also if you're doing any kind of specialized sound effects or going for a specialized stereo technique you could go for triggering a specific image here. But in general, it just gives you some information about your phase. So that's what these guys at the top do. You've got your time over here. You can go through different time codes. If you go into the settings here and set these up in order to do it however you want, you can color it differently however you want. They're always really good about that kind of a thing. Meters, of course, you've got your general ways of also viewing the meter. Um, and you can give off different ranges to the different colors. You can define it how you want. So if you have a particular standard you want to hit and you want to know that this color goes with that loudness, you can set it up right here. Now in the meter peak, you've got true, apple, and sample. So I usually leave mine on true, but you know, you do you. And you can set up some of the meter behavior. We've got a location haze and a frequency haze, which is over here. So this is the frequency, this is the location. They're a bit tiny when they're in the all views mode. So while I'm here, I should also say you can just go to any mode and you can click this little expander button to get just this. And if we look at the meters just going, you can see how the sound sits in terms of frequency in a spatial view. And I chose a 7.1.2 session because it gives you the top speakers, speakers that would go above you. So these will show up. This extra one on the side will only show up in that case. So if you were to have like a 5.1 session, uh, this, this wouldn't be here because it's for 5.1. So there would be no top speakers. There'd be no reason. But anyways, frequency haze, this one's pretty uh, handy, especially if you want it to sound like sounds coming from somewhere. They're going to be generally looking for, you know, specific frequency bands in certain areas. So high frequency is generally associated with sounding closer. So if you wanted a creepy like thing coming from the side, you'd want to see some action out here on the sides. That way, you know, oh, okay, it's going to sound like they're whispering in the ear from like behind you or something, something like that. Uh, if you were lacking this and you saw it appear over here, but there's a lot of energy still over here, then you may get the feeling that it's, you know, more over here or that the whispers would be coming from over there, but the body sits over here. It'd be kind of a weird spatial experience. So just paying attention to stuff like that is what you'd be kind of looking for in this sort of a meter. Um, of course, you're gonna be using your ears and you'll be sitting there mixing. So hopefully you'll be able to just perceive this, but things the meter can tell you just from looking at it. There's an example of one such thing. If we go over here to the location haze and open this up, same thing, except for this one gives you a distribution of energy. This one is displayed as a box. The floor is over here, ceiling's over here. So if we put our source on the bottom, we're sitting here on the floor. Sounds, a lot of the sound from behind, based on where we are, we can move this around. We bring it up. It is always interesting when you get a setup that is, you know, a proper Dolby Atmos setup to try and mix music in, the sorts of effects you can get. It's really... Just a shame we don't regularly have access to such listening environments because the music could could be really cool. Uh, typically, you know, headphones, stereo, that's that's the standard. 
But anyways, yeah, location haze, that's where we're sitting. That's what it does. Kind of gives you a vibe of where things are more generally. So the location, the, the location haze, that is. The frequency haze will tell you more about specifically fre specific frequency content, which can be useful in when directional cues are involved that you can directly trace to a frequency range. So that's the difference on when you choose one over the other. I think they're both pretty telling. I find myself usually favoring the frequency haze over the energy distribution. This is kind of like a just a neat to look at and, and check and see how it's working out. And I also do generally like the up down translation on here versus the frequency haze of this. This is this is a little less telling for me when I do have top channels. So anyways, that's what's going on there. And then finally at the bottom, you got the spectrogram, probably the tool you're the most familiar with besides the meters. And this is just gonna tell you, right, you're able to group channels. So if you come in here and click on the cog, uh, you've got groups and single. And in the groups, you can edit them so that specific sets of channels go together in groups. Now this can be great because you can do things like take the left and the right, uh, which may sometimes have dialogue, but they often have other content that's gonna be sitting more towards the front of the mix. And then the center channel, is gonna have your dialogue generally, you know, it's kind of the standard. And you can see how these things are going to sit next to each other with the colors. So you might pick brighter colors. And this will also just give you a heads up on if you could possibly have masking problems. So very, very handy thing to look at here. And then you've got, of course, the way to adjust how the curves show up, how long they stay there, what it takes for them to reach. Like, for example, I've got it on peak hold right now uh, to reach a peak and how long it'll sit at that peak so you can get a good look at the audio. So just taking a look at that here. So when doing specific comparisons like the checking for masking in particular channels, it's helpful to just also toggle the other groups off so that they're not on. So let's also really quick come back up here and look at this real quick. So you can see phase relationships here uh, between the channels. This It looks crazy at 7.1.2. It's just like bananas. But um, in general, what this is going to do is you can set a threshold if we come in here. So you can set this threshold to only fire under like more extreme circumstances. And I find it a little more helpful than over here sometimes because there's something about just seeing the line light up. You're like, oh, okay. Most of the time, especially in music mixing, these two aren't going to be as helpful like as far as music goes because usually, you know, that's going to be just regular stereo stuff caused by verb or something. That's not going to be as much of an issue. But if you, if you see this when you're mixing for a film, for example, it, this could be more telling because now you can say, like, oh, the left speaker with, you know, the right top speaker, probably not going to be that big a deal. But if you start seeing things in areas like a chunk of it turns a certain color, then in that spot of the listening environment, you may run into a very different auditory experience than somewhere else in the room that's a caused by your mix and not actually just the acoustics of the room. So that's kind of what you're looking for when you look at this. Again, it's not going to come up hardly ever in music mixing scenarios if you're for some reason mixing for, for this sort of a setup. Uh, but when you're mixing like fully, specifically like sound effects with directional cues and you want them to come across a certain way, uh, this could be a little helpful to, to see if an issue pops up like that or maybe you're specifically aiming for an issue like, or not an issue, I guess it'd be a creative goal to give a particular impression. Over here, you've got the same sort of setup, except for in this case, green green boxes mean they are positively correlated, you know, phase will, phases will add, and red boxes mean they won't. And if we were to expand this, you can actually see them labeled if you wanna see like a cross labeling. And then hovering over any particular one or clicking it will highlight that particular relationship. So for example, we could click the center and see how it relates to the left channel. Oh, it's positively correlated. Over here, you know, not so positively correlated. Again, a lot of these variations are just due to the fact that I have a surround verb on there and the verb's gonna cause all the crazy things going around. So it's not gonna be that big a deal in the context of, you know, what's happening in a particular region of the room. Let's go back to the all views mode. But anyways, there's a quick rundown of the meters, what they do, some use cases and examples, and like kind of when you have it up, what you might be looking for. I feel like the meters are pretty, you know, self-explanatory. Um, again, you using the spectrograms better for checking masking. 
than the meters are because, you know, masking is typically a frequency specific thing anyways. But you could also look here to see oh, if the content and channels that are close to each other is both very similar and loud. Um, you know, it could also be shown there. But hopefully by then your ears will have picked it up. So this is mostly for just making sure you're staying in the, in the range necessary for whatever specification you've been given. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.